Rings and gemstones have a special place in Islamic culture and history. Most, if not all Muslims agree that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, wore at least one ring, and this is something that is followed by Muslims all over the world. But what ring did the Holy Prophet wear? How does one wear a ring? And which rings are recommended to wear? If you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification button to be notified so you never miss a video. There are numerous hadith that mention that Prophet Muhammad wore a ring. One such hadith mentions, I have acquired a ring of silver and engraved on it Muhammad Rasulullah and no one should have an engraving like this. The Holy Prophet would specifically use this ring as a seal on letters. Another hadith reaffirming this says, When the Prophet wanted to send a letter to the Romans, he was told that they would not read any letter unless it had a seal on it, so he took a ring of silver. It is as if I can see it shining on his hand and engraved on it were the words Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. While men are prohibited from wearing a gold ring in Islam, it is deemed makru, according to some schools, for either men or women to wear an iron, steel or brass ring. Other schools don't deem it makru to wear an iron ring, but rather state that the wearing of a ring of silver is better. Among Sunni Muslims, there is a disagreement as to whether the Holy Prophet wore it on his left or right hand. According to Hanafi, Maliki and Hanbali schools, it is better to wear a ring on the left hand. Multiple reasons are cited, one of which being the following hadith. It was narrated that Anas said, The ring of the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, was worn on this, and he pointed to the little finger on his left hand. Other arguments include it being the way of the Sahaba, with many reported to have worn rings on their left hands, as well as the fact that it would have been easier to use for stamping seals when holding a paper with one's right hand. The Shafi'i school of thought recommends wearing the ring on the right hand, citing the hadith. It was narrated from Anas ibn Malik that the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, wore a ring of silver on his right hand, in which there was an Abyssinian stone, and he used to put the stone facing toward his palm. Besides other similar narrations, the argument of the school is also that the Prophet would always start with the right in daily tasks of adornment, such as putting on shoes and combing hair. Some also point out that there are also hadith that prominent Sahaba wore rings on their right hands, perhaps suggesting that wearing a ring on either hand is recommended. Hadith suggest that the Holy Prophet wore a ring on his index finger. A narration attributed to Imam Ali says, The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, forbade us to wear rings on these two fingers, and he pointed to the middle finger and the one next to it. In Shia Islamic tradition, according to one narration, wearing a ring on the right hand is one of the signs of the believers. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq says that a ring should be worn at the end of the finger where it joins the palm. In another hadith, the Holy Prophet asks Imam Ali to wear a ring on his right hand so that he may be counted among the Muqarrabin, those near to God. Many of the companions of the Prophet had engravings on their rings. Abdullah ibn Omar, for example, had his own name engraved on his ring, while Hudhaifa and Abu Ubaidah had Alhamdulillah on theirs. Imam Ali had a ring saying Allah the Sovereign or Allah is the Master of the Kingdom or similar. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein also had their rings engraved, with Hassan's reading Verily all honour belongeth only to God and Imam Hussein's reading Verily God accomplisheth his purpose. Gems have a special place in Islam. One example of this is Al Hajar al Aswad, the black stone which sits by the Kaaba and which Muslims are keen to kiss and touch. Some believe that gems have the power to cure diseases, both physical and metaphysical. The finger is a direct link to the heart, and, according to some experts, in the mysticism and scientific properties of gems, it is the energy of the gems that transfers itself from the stone into the body. The hadith mentioned earlier by Anas bin Malik confirms that the Holy Prophet indeed wore an aqiq stone, quoted as the Abyssinian stone, also known as agate, on his ring. This means that it is of the sunnah to wear an aqiq stone. In Shia literature, there are numerous ahadith on the benefits of gemstones, including aqiq. Imam Ali al radha says, aqiq takes away poverty and dissolves differences from one's heart. It is also narrated from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, aqiq brings safety while traveling. It is also said that aqiq helps calm the temper, protect against difficulties, helps lessen sorrow, bring luck when traveling, and strengthens concentration, among other qualities. 
Another stone that a hadith recommend to wear is Fayruz or turquoise. A hadith from Imam Radha says, whosoever wears a turquoise ring will never become dependent. Imam Ali is narrated to have said that it protects a believer from misdeeds. It is also said to protect its wearer against the evil or jealous eye. Other stones recommended by Imam Ali Radha are Yaqut or Ruby, which he said stops worries, Zabrajad or Jade, of which he said the same, and Zamarrad or Emerald, which he said turns the poor into the rich. The Holy Quran itself refers to Yaqut when it says, as though in good looks they are like rubies and coral. Muslims differ on the extent to which gemstones can aid or have an effect on those wearing them. Some limit the ring that is recommended to be worn to a silver ring, based on prior mentioned hadith, while others limit it to an aqiq ring, since the Holy Prophet is narrated to have worn it and see no benefit in other gemstones. Regardless, all Muslims believe in the benefit and divine reward of wearing a ring in general, and, based on the Muslims of history narrated to have worn, if not praised, numerous rings and gemstones, it has been and will continue to be a beautiful and important part of the Islamic identity. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification button to be notified so you never miss a video.